Um, first off, uh, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy Earth Day. Uh, today is Earth Day, and uh, while I'm sure everyone uh, here is experiencing uh, their own, you know, very unique uh, form of, of of challenge uh, or, or or adversity, you know, given through whatever lens uh, you're experiencing this this COVID uh, crisis, um, seeing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, 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 positivity around how the Earth uh, itself is, is experiencing uh, what 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 is happening. So maybe maybe a form of a silver lining uh, from that perspective. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to today's uh, webinar. Uh, this webinar is uh, one is a program that we've been running for uh, the last year or so, really for the purpose of bringing uh, together members from uh, the, the talent or technology community um, to talk about all sorts of various uh, topics. Of, of interest to uh, you know, learn, to share, uh, contribute, uh, all for the purpose of you know, doing better for our respective uh, hiring organizations and, and, and leaders uh, that, we, uh, that, that, that we work with and serve. Uh, we've been speeding up the frequency and pace of these webinars in recent uh, weeks, uh, just kind of recognizing that you know, everyone is you know, dealing with and experiencing some version of, of challenge or uh, or or uh, ad adversity as it relates to you know whatever their situation may be whether it's you know work from home or uh, a remote hiring or job search and so uh, we're really just kind of motivated to uh, uh, share in, in in our learnings uh, and, and perspective to you know, add, uh, add in, and, and contribute as much value uh, we can to the uh, to the community at large. Um, this specific topic uh, we're we're very excited about. We started talking about it internally with with Sam and amongst our team. Uh, a few weeks ago, which feels like a long time ago, uh, but you know, in the in the in the, in the scheme of things, um, this this report uh, and this webinar covers uh, a comparison of the recent uh, five to six weeks of uh, hiring activity uh, during this COVID nineteen time, and we're really uh, uh, curious um, by how this specific uh, activity compares to what we have historically been used to uh, and, and seeing. Uh, and so while everyone uh, here may be experiencing some version of, of change or, or, or difference, uh, we wanted to look at the data uh, to best inform uh, what, 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 what may actually be having uh, happening at some form of an, an aggregate or broader uh, level. Um, so uh, Sam uh, spearheaded, our data analyst manager spearheaded uh, the, um, th this analysis and the, the, the drafting of a report, uh, which we will be sharing with everybody here uh, and, and the extended community uh, upon the completion of this webinar. Um, and so the purpose of this webinar is to walk you through uh, these, uh, th these, these respective uh, findings uh, and engage in a discussion uh, about them. So we could expect this, um, this webinar to be about one hour in length. The first 30 minutes uh, are gonna be spent walking through uh, these respective uh, findings, um, and the, the the last twenty minutes uh, are going to be spent uh, engaging in uh, what 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 we're excited for uh, in uh, a rich Q and A uh, based on uh, a number of questions that have come through uh, from from registrants and and a number of others that that come through throughout. So as you're uh, as you're watching and engaging, uh, feel free to. Um, feel free to chat any questions uh, that you may have. Uh, Tani from our team is going to be moderating uh, the, the Q&A. Um, you know, we'll, we'll share a copy of this recording with everybody here, as well as a copy of the Insights Report. You know, though we'll have some, some rich graphics here that you're welcome to screen share uh, in, in sharing uh, back with your, with your team. Um, again, I'll be co-presenting on this uh, topic with our Data Analytics Manager, Sam. Um, and just a little bit of, of, of unique perspective uh, to, to share so you, uh, you all can you know, get a sense of um, the place that this is coming from. Um, we're, we're, in the, we're, in, we're in the business of providing recruiting uh, services to technology companies uh, uh, across the country. Uh, we work with such a broad uh, demographic of uh, technology companies from early stage to mid-stage high growth to pre-IPO unicorns to publicly traded across the country and across the functions of the technology companies. Um, and so the, the, this, this perspective uh, we're looking at uh, uh, serving as almost like a proxy for the broader uh, technology industry at large. And so hopefully you'll be able to uh, kind of receive it from, from a similar lens of value. Um, before we jump into it, let's start with a uh, brief uh, poll, uh, get a sense of who all is here with us. So what is the hiring status of your company? 
Is it A, active? Is it B, frozen? Is it C, somewhere in between? Or is it just complicated? All right, looks like it's somewhere across the board. We have 21% here that are active. We have 35% that are uh, frozen. And it looks like the, 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 the leading demographic here is frozen. Uh, we have 29% uh, that are somewhere in between and 16% uh, who, are, uh, who are in a complicated situation. And I think you'll feel that right now. Um, Let's, let's now move on to the insights part. So I'll pass it over to Sam to take us from here. All right, thanks Boris. Um, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us. So today I'm gonna share with you some insights from our recruiting activity before and during the crisis. And then uh, Boris will provide color commentary from the recruiter's perspective along the way. But before I get, it, get into it, I wanted to provide you with some context for what's been going on in the tech labor market overall. So here we, we're looking at the, the total number of US tech workers annually since 2008. And we can see that it's been increasing pretty steadily by about 2% a year to 12.1 million last year, uh, which represents about 7% of the, the total US workforce. So pretty significant. And then looking at supply and demand um, in the tech industry overall, um, we can see that the tech labor market has historically been a, a seller's market, right? Meaning in favor of the talent. Um, the blue line here represents the, the number of open jobs that, that we've had, um, in other words, representing demand. And then the red line below is a number of CS grads per year, which represents supply. And we can see that the gap has been um, pretty large and, and widening, which has re resulted in increasingly fierce competition for talent. And of course, you know, the number of CS grads overall is not really representative of, of the total supply of available labor. But given that there is a large gap between uh, the number of open jobs and, and annual graduates, we kind of made the assumption here that, okay, any available supply, non-graduate available supply would be taken up immediately by the demand. And so we're, we're basically assuming zero tech unemployment here. Okay, and how has COVID um, impacted these dynamics? Well, first, looking at the overall US labor market, we, we've all heard the stats, right? So 22 million, unemployment claims over just the past five weeks, um, which is incredible. And, and to put that in perspective, uh, CNN just reported recently that during the, the so-called Great Recession of 2008 to 2009, there were only 8.6 million unemployment claims filed over a period of, of nearly two years. And so what we're seeing in this current crisis is nearly three times that in just over a month which is uh, just astounding. And how has tech uh, specifically been impacted? Well, um, you know, first we know that supply is increasing because of, of all the people that have filed for unemployment. Um, and, and then For Forbes estimates that um, there have been about 20,000 layoffs at venture-backed companies uh, just in the past month, between March 11th and uh, April 12th. Um, and, and that does not include furlough. So including furlough, the total number of impacted tech workers could be easily be, be double that amount. And then uh, by our estimates, the, the number of open jobs has, has also been decreasing by, um, has also decreased by, anywhere from 20 to 30% based on what we're seeing in the market and, and in our own business overall. And so our point here is that the, the, the sudden spike 
and available uh, quality labor supply um, in combination with the pullback in demand um, in the form of fewer open jobs has created what we think is like a, a, a unique opportunity for, for employers to take advantage and acquire um, quality talent at relatively lower cost than what they would be able to in a, in a normal environment. Okay, um, so jumping into uh, insights from our own proprietary data, the time period of the study conducted was about 14 months from February of last year through last Friday, April 17th, and it covered 81 companies in really what's a, a broad swath of, of tech segments, including FinTech, HealthTech, um, food delivery apps, video gaming, and, and, and more. Um, the clients that we studied include those listed here. And then, um, of course, a, a full list of our client portfolio can also be found on our website at um, binksearch.com. And then quickly looking at the overall um, aggregate stats, you see a lot of big numbers here, um, you know, more than 157,000 candidate reach outs and responses. And, and those only include the ones that we conducted on GEM because those are the ones that we record and track. Um, you see over 10,500 phone screens, 1,300 offers, and 856 um, offer accepts. And then um, we, we wanted to determine a, a, a good date um, for which to separate the analysis from pre-crisis and, and during crisis. And so we did some research um, into the, the, the timeline of events of, of, of COVID, uh, related to COVID. And we decided, um, after considering several different options, we decided that Friday, March 13th, would be a, a reasonable and meaningful date um, for which when um, business in the United States changed. Okay, so finally, um, jumping into the actual data. Um, I think there was a question submitted um, in advance asking uh, whether or not we, we had seen any change in candidate interest or availability. And um, the answer is yes. Um, so we, we, we looked at reach out response rates and um, response rates overall increased from 9% uh, in the period before the crisis to 10% uh, during. And then positive response rates um, increased rather significantly from 3.7% pre-crisis to 5.3% uh, during. Um, Boris. Do you, does this surprise you at all? You know, what, what do you think is going on here? Any thoughts? Yeah, uh, not surprised uh, by what we're seeing here, uh, given uh, the uh, increase in um, uh, available uh, talent uh, and recruiter uh, propensity to uh, uh, engage with, um, you know, what we're seeing so much out there around uh, company layoff lists or uh, 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 companies that have, you know, such high quality talent being made available in such short order, uh, definitely not, uh, not surprised to see uh, the increase here. All right, great, thanks. Um, so next we looked at uh, the number of new candidates that have been coming in um, on a weekly basis. And what we found, interestingly, was that the average number of new candidates increased by nearly 80% from pre-crisis levels, from 466 per week, to um, 826 during the crisis. So in other words, uh, we interpreted this to mean that the supply, the supply of tech labor is indeed um, growing. And then digging in a little deeper, we, we found that the, the mix inbound candidates, in other words, applicants, has grown from 13% um, of all candidates pre-crisis to 20% during. And then meanwhile, um, the mix of direct source candidates has decreased from 76 to 71%. And then um, all other candidates have declined as well from 11 to 9%. And then looking at weekly activity um, per recruiter before and after the crisis, we, we see a, a big increase 
increase in, in weekly activity um, from top of the funnel through, through on-site. Um, recruiter screens, phone screens, and on-sites each incre increased by um, an average of 40 to 50% from pre-crisis levels. Um, but interestingly, we, we did not see much change in offers per week or accepts per week, which could indicate that there may be a, a bottleneck forming. And we'll, we'll discuss that in um, further detail in just a minute um, when we look at conversion rates. But first, um, let's do another, another poll question. So for this poll, we're asking, at what stage in the hiring process do you expect to see the biggest change in conversion rate? A, re recruiter screen to phone screen, B, phone screen to onsite, C, onsite to offer, or D, offer to accept? All right, so it looks like most of you are expecting um, the biggest change in um, offer to accept conversions, and then uh, kind of equally split between uh, the top of the funnel through mid funnel. And then, oh, uh, C was the least popular, which is, which is interesting. All right, so let's see, let's see who was right. So looking at conversion rates across the funnel, uh, we see kind of like not much change um, from recruiter screen through onsite, but then we see a, a rather steep drop off um, from onsite to offer uh, of 12 percentage points and then uh, an almost equally steep increase from offer to accept. So, so people who chose D, you guys were close, um, but no cigar. If you chose C, um, you, you, you guessed correctly. Uh, Boris, do you have any do you have any thoughts about these uh, these big swings and sort of op opposite directions? Does, does that make sense to you? Yeah, it is. It is interesting to to see this. Uh, I may not have guessed it, but it, um, what I what I would have expected to happen, but for this data, is uh, because of the sudden shock and the immediacy of this change. Um, I expected a fair amount of recruiting activity to continue until any sort of decision making finds itself up to that part of the funnel. Um, while a very natural place for decision making to infuse itself is that onsite to offer phase. So if you think about what naturally has to happen in order for an offer to be approved or, or, or cleared, um, you need uh, agreement on role, you need uh, confidence of organization, you need uh, alignment between uh, key decision makers. And because again of the of the suddenness of the of the change, um, that onsite to offer was a very natural place uh, to create that uh, to create that pause, uh, 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 unless there was absolute clarity of of movement forward. Uh, so that makes sense uh, from what we're seeing on the ground. And then uh, from an offer to accept perspective, it makes equal sense that because of the the scarcity of of offers, the smaller number of offers uh, that are that are going out, and the availability of of uh, very active talent, it uh, equally makes sense to see that offer to accept uh, 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 reflected uh, in the way that it is. Makes sense. Thanks a lot, Boris. Um, so, so digging in a little bit deeper into, into conversion rates, um, we, we also examined um, recruiter screen to, uh, to phone screen conversions by channel or source type. And the sources we looked at were, were referrals, paid sources, direct, and applicants. And I think there was a question um, submitted in advance um, asking something like, uh, what, are, what are the most popular applied channels that you're seeing? And so you see here that, um, not surprisingly, pre-crisis, which, which are the blue bars, um, referrals were the most, were, were the most popular and, and highest converting um, channel. For, for candidates at 64%, but that has dropped to 49% during the crisis. Um, paid and direct source um, have basically stayed the same before and, and, and during the crisis. 
And then um, interestingly, we've seen not only an increase in the number of applicants, as we, as we pointed out earlier, but um, applicants are, inbound applicants are converting at, at, a, at a much higher rate as well during the crisis at 54% versus 43% um, prior. And next, we wanted to test the theory that, um, that a bottleneck may be forming, right? So we looked at rejections um, at each stage to see where they were occurring. And interestingly, we found that um, the percent of rejections occurring at the on-site stage has increased by 40% from 10% prior to the crisis to 14% to during. And this would su suggest that um, a bottleneck is not forming, but that candidates are, um, I mean, not candidates, sorry, companies are choosing to, to reject candidates and, and just move on um, outright. But it's not just, not just companies that are passing on candidates. Um, we, we see candidates withdrawing more as well. Here we can see that the percentage of candidate withdrawals um, has increased from 31% to, to 38%. And then uh, digging in a little bit deeper to see where candidates are withdrawing, I think there was um, another question submitted in advance about uh, you know, are we seeing an increase in candidate withdrawals at late stage? Well, the answer is, is no. Um, we're seeing uh, candidate withdrawals at offer decline slightly from 6% to 5%, but where we are seeing a big increase is, um, is again at the on-site stage. Uh, the percentage of candidates withdrawing has increased from 8% pre-crisis to 14% um, to during during the crisis. Boris, um, any thoughts here? Uh, why, do, why do you think candidates are withdrawing more? That's, that seems kind of counterintuitive to me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. I think um, you'd expect because of the availability of, of uh, the sizable increase in availability of talent uh, to be kind of opposite of what the data is showing. Um, what we believe is happening is uh, while active candidates are uh, much more motivated to see their way through, uh, candidates who are currently employed uh, at places that uh, they may now see as a you know, safer or, uh, or a better place to be employed, uh, at least in the, for the foreseeable future, um, we, we see those as the ones that are likely withdrawing uh, from the process based on how they're um, you know, comparing their current place of employment uh, from a prospect to whatever you know new company it is that they might be uh, that they might be considering. Sure, sure, that makes sense. All right. So um, finally, we we looked at funnel speed to see if there was anything interesting going on there, and um, there definitely was. Uh, another interesting side effect of COVID has been a significant improvement in funnel speed. Um, looking at recruiter screen, aver the average number of days from recruiter screen to onsite, we can see that it nearly halved from 24 days uh, pre-crisis to 13 days during. Um, and then uh, onsite to accept days uh, is less than, less than a third of what it was uh, pre-crisis. Um, Boris, do you, do you have any insights you can share here? Um, what, what, what do you think is going on? Yeah, this, this one is a fascinating one um, because if you think about all of, if you think about pre, pre-crisis uh, when it was most common for uh, companies to, you know, bring people on site in the form of, you know, physically inviting them to, to offices um, and all of the hurdles that need to be cleared in order for an on-site interview to take place from a scheduling perspective, from an interviewer bandwidth capacity, room availability uh, 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 perspective, all of those hurdles are now uh, cleared uh, and, and, and removed from, uh, from, from, from the process right now. Um, and we're seeing that, that throughput out from a, a speed of, of process. And so um, companies that are able to um, you know, move at this, at this pace uh, are seeing an increased advantage uh, in terms of ability to um, uh, uh, take advantage of the available talent. Uh, those that those that are either surprised by this or that aren't able to move that fast might find themselves uh, not able to capture the the talent um, that they're that they're looking for, and so may want may want to look at this as a 
as a um, as an as adjustment opportunity. Sure. Let's let's uh, go into our last uh, poll question here, just to get a sense of what it is that we shared here that may have either been surprising or uh, or, or 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 new. Um, so, what did you find the most surprising in the data? Was it a the response rates? Was it B, the increased activity? Was it C, the conversion rates? Was it D, the final speed? Or was this about what you expected? Okay, let's see what the group had to say. Seemed like not a lot of surprise around response rate. A little more surprise around the increased activity, a little more around the conversion rates, but it seems like the standout uh, data point with the group on that. So shifting over uh, away from the from the data and now into some of the some of the takeaways uh, and some some recommendations and then we'll jump right into uh, the, the the rich q a that we have planned um, so in recap we knew that we came from a place where the gap in uh, quality supply of talent and the demand for that talent is is wide uh, thereby creating the talent market that we've been uh, used to for the last handful of years around scarcity of, uh, scarcity of great quality uh, talent. Uh, now uh, we find ourselves in a very unique uh, period where the decrease in demand, smaller number of jobs and the increase in supply has created a very unique opportunity uh, for those motivated to take advantage. And while, uh, while a common narrative may say that nobody's hiring or there aren't many jobs out there. There are uh, uh, very, uh, very well uh, companies that are forward thinking and positioning themselves to take advantage of the available talent uh, that exists in whatever way makes sense for their, for their organization. Uh, equal consideration for, for the world is the, the, the quick shift to uh, the embracing of remote and distributed work. Uh, and then finally, the, the speed, uh, the increased velocity uh, by which all of this is happening is one uh, that is uh, imperative to, to consider. So the couple of different camps that, that individuals here might find themselves in. Uh, first camp, if you are hiring uh, right now, um, it's imperative that uh, your leadership is clear uh, with uh, all respective uh, constituents, their recruiters, their interviewers, uh, anyone involved in onboarding, what their uh, hiring intent, strategy, and priorities are so that that full group is able to move uh, with, with speed and, and, and uh, alignment uh, in the uh, attraction and, and hiring of talent. Um, recruiters right now find themselves on such a front line of uh, insight and pulse as far as what's happening in the, in the market, the availability of that talent, the mindset of that talent, uh, that uh, it's recommended to uh, have a tight feedback loop uh, so that um, the, uh, the, the hiring uh, group can take advantage of those respective insights. Uh, and then finally, uh, speed being the uh, key ingredient, uh, ability to move fast uh, for that talent that you're motivated to hire. If hiring is on your short-term radar, uh, but you haven't quite uh, encroached uh, in, 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 in you know, full force for this opportunity, uh, some options uh, for, uh, for you and your company to uh, consider uh, one market mapping uh, is uh, is a great um, uh, item to to prioritize. Uh, navigating or uh, you know, ma mapping the the uh, the uh, specific markets that might be of, of interest to you to get a sense of what that uh, total talent level may uh, may look like for you. Uh, we're seeing companies engage top talent for the benefit of developing relationships, uh, putting that uh, uh, putting that talent on each uh, each of your respective radars for when opportunities do um, become available. Um, and then prioritizing certain roles uh, that may be uh, um, advantageous to uh, take advantage of uh, in uh, this unique hiring, hiring climate. So maybe not all-in hiring or all-out hiring, but prioritizing the very specific roles uh, 
uh, that you want to benefit uh, from from this market conditions. Um, of course, with cost being such a major uh, consideration for for companies, considering uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the hiring or uh, some of these above items using um, more you know, short term and, and flexible cost uh, or service models uh, in whatever way possible. And then we're also seeing companies who have may historically been fixed on a local geography expand their their views uh, just given a uh, renewed comfort with um, with uh, remote uh, interviewing and employment capability while nobody could predict the future uh, we'll take our very you know modest attempt at, at, at doing that without putting any respective timelines on it uh, we do believe that this current um, the current uh, hiring conditions and the market conditions that we see uh, today will be will be short-lived uh, it's difficult to tell uh, whether that will uh, whether they'll be short-lived through the next few weeks or the next you know, month or two. Um, but we will see a midterm opportunity during which we expect to see this gap, this opportunity gap uh, close or the supply demand gap uh, begin to uh, widen, uh, thereby meaning more job opportunities available and less uh, quality talent uh, available in the, in the market. And then the long-term opportunity, we do see the market uh, returning to its original state and continuing to, to widen. Um, so again, making this very, very specific opportunity, the one that we're in right now that, that is going to be short-lived, uh, the, the opportunistic one uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, leveraging um, uh, high-quality uh, available talent. So with that, we'll jump right into questions. And there were some, there were some pretty great ones. Uh, that we'll be happy to uh, walk through and share some share some perspective on uh, with, the, with the group. Thank you, Boris and Sam. Um, so we had a question that came in through the chat. Um, it was on the funnel speed slide. On site to accept is getting faster. Um, to what extent do you think this is employers giving short windows because they have more um, good alternatives? For instance, we only give three to four business days to decide, or um, is it that candidates are more enthusiastically taking other offers or taking offers? That's a good question. We think it's more of the more of the second that's happening. Candidates more enthusiastically taking offers. If it is, if it is the first where companies are giving shorter windows to make a decision, uh, we don't see it as um, something that companies are taking advantage of. Rather, we see companies having equally good number two or number three uh, uh, op uh, hiring options available in the event that option number one chooses to not move forward. Thank you. Um, another question is which companies, uh, names or types, are leaning in to hire aggressively um, while many are hiring more cautiously? What's uh, common about the companies that are viewing this as an opportunity to attract great talent? Yeah, that's a good question. We can only share from, you know, from, from our perspective. Um, the the companies that find themselves um, in a position of being able to offer great value to whatever their you know customer base might look like today are the ones that are that we're seeing lean in. So you know think about all of yourselves as as consumers of all sorts of technology services. You know we're using we're using Zoom here. We're getting our food delivered. Uh, we're being entertained. Uh, uh, we're using you know apps all that are primarily technology driven and are being built by uh, you know, these, these technology companies. It's primarily those companies that we're seeing uh, double down on their hiring efforts and activities. Um, those companies that are in the, in, the, in the middle camp of having a strong business model, having strong business prospects, uh, but, are in a, uh, uh, but are not very directly contributing to what, we're, what we might be experiencing as today's value, uh, they're in a they're they're primarily in a wait and see uh, mode, and and those companies that are serving industries that are uh, very directly impacted, like the, you know food and like a hospitality industry, a restaurant industry, uh, travel industry, are uh, seeing uh, a very very major uh, setbacks um, in their in, in their in their business and operating abilities and hiring. So. Thank you. Um, have you seen, or do you know of any market info on how COVID has impacted salary and overall comp? And then have you seen a softening at all in um, compensation anywhere? Yeah, that's not, that's, that's not like a comp question. Um, we haven't seen any data to support uh, a proactive uh, softening in, in comp. Um, we're, 
we haven't seen ranges change. Uh, we're seeing uh, a, a, a companies take, take a little bit more of a conservative position within, within a range, uh, but we haven't seen uh, anything drastic. Uh, we, we, we expect the longer uh, that this continues, the more uh, uh, comp to soften. Um, we're also seeing companies uh, be more open uh, as far as the, the different markets that they that they recruit in and, and recruiting for markets outside of what may you know historically been high cost like uh, like like the Bay Area uh, in favor of uh, markets that are uh, lower cost uh, like some of the other some of the other parts of the country uh, naturally lend companies to hiring you know uh, uh, equally qualified talent but at a lower uh, cost. Thank you. How do you see COVID-19 impacting in-house and third-party recruiters when it comes to available roles and candidates? Yeah, what we're seeing, um, so you know, map, to the, map to that first question around who's hiring. So if you're a company that's hiring, you employ an internal recruiting team. Obviously that internal recruiting team is, is, is really busy uh, right now and, and, and it's uh, even more likely that that company's looking for, for, for additional help. Um, if you're in, if you're an in-house recruiter and you're working for a company that's in uh, either declining on their hiring or uh, trying to figure out their hiring, uh, we're seeing more companies than not try to be creative uh, with how those internal recruiters are leveraged. So you might have recruiters work on a smaller number of roles. You may have recruiters working on uh, some sort of programmatic uh, initiatives or or items in, you know in service of improving overall talent acquisition. Uh, uh, capabilities. You're seeing some of those creative strategies uh, that I shared. Um, for those companies that uh, um, we're seeing even more creative versions where uh, internal recruiters are being redeployed to other, uh, other, de other uh, departments of the company. We're seeing recruiters redeployed to customer success uh, or customer service in, 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 uh, for companies where that's a value. We've seen companies redeploy their recruiters to cause-based uh, initiatives and you know, uh, uh, allowing recruiters to serve uh, uh, um, uh, organizations that are on the pro, uh, more on the front lines of COVID responsiveness. So we're seeing some really nice creativity uh, around that. We're seeing, an, uh, um, yeah, so that's on the internal side. On the, on the agency side, um, we're, seeing, um, we're seeing engagement with agencies and interest in working with agencies very specifically confined to the talent that that agency is able to service, service uh, surface at that very specific moment in time. Uh, so we're seeing engagement be less about general assistance and support and more around the specificity of the available talent that that, that, that agency happens to be able to surface as aligned to whatever that company happens to very specifically need uh, at that time. Thank you. Um, how do you see this impacting winter and summer of 2021 internships? Um, I think the further out, I think like with like, like what we're seeing with any, you know, further out uh, events and, and initiatives, um, the further out the event and initiative is, uh, the, 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 the less impacted that we're, that we're seeing it. Uh, so we don't do a ton of work with the intern community, but I would expect that for the most part, companies are holding on their, meaning companies are, are companies have plans to continue to move forward with their uh, summer 2021 uh, internship plans, uh, but but depending on you know whatever their internal strategy is around hiring confidence, uh, may uh, we, we may start to see pullback on that on that winter on that winter class, and then just you know inversely speaking, uh, that may create a very you know unique and compelling opportunity for um, what would commonly be that intern class to kind of re re, re envision and re reimagine what 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 uh, what what an optimal intern experience could look like uh, with, with less, with, with, with that reduction in opportunity uh, that, may, that may exist. Thank you. Um, another one that came in was, how does the um, Paycheck Protection Program package impact hiring? For example, if um, we hire someone that is a new hire protected, and um, are they protected in terms of having to pay um, back the loan? Is the company protected? I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, at, the, at the Paycheck Protection uh, Program, my understanding is uh, a lot of the forgiveness criteria is specifically related to um, aligned employment levels from historic to, to current. Uh, and so to the, to the extent that a company's 
able to achieve uh, aligned uh, employment levels, I would imagine that the employer would likely do so with either laid off or furloughed individuals first, and then and then and then go to uh, hiring outside folks second. Uh, but I haven't heard much about uh, hiring and PPP. Uh, it's mostly about bringing back uh, um, those unemployed or furloughed. Thank you. Um, what new trends are you predicting in both the workforce and recruiting activity once COVID-19 passes? And are things uh, restored to a new normal? I think there are, there are you know, two things to look at and we, we saw it in this, uh, we saw it in the data here. Uh, one would be the, the, remote, the remote nature. I think an open question for the community is gonna be, um, is remote here to stay? To what degree is it? Is it here to stay? Um, you know, companies that have historically, you know, bred an on-site culture, uh, to what degree are they going to feel comfortable embracing a more remote uh, culture? Uh, we're, we're, um, we're, seeing, we're seeing companies that, are, that have a local presence continue to want to hire in their local presence with, uh, with the expectation that, that, that you know, life will resume uh, in that on-site fashion. And we're seeing equal companies uh, open themselves up to being more open to, to, to remote talent knowing that that talent is going to stay remote, uh, which is, which is, which is you know, very re refreshing to see from an from a, from a expansion of market and an opportunity perspective. So that, that's definitely one uh, that, that's worth looking at. And then the second one is the, is the, is the speed uh, part. So you know, once we're, now that we're used to operating at such a frequency uh, and, and seeing the, 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 the gains of that frequency, uh, what will what will speed of experience look like? What will speed of experience need to look like? Will we will we want to go back to a world that you know has those um, you know uh, uh, friction points around scheduling and room availability and uh, uh, interviewer capacity, et cetera, uh, that, that 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 we're able to kind of like freely freely uh, 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 freely work without uh, right right now. I think those are those are two to look at. Thank you. Um, another one that came in was, do you expect the widening gap with CS grads and tech openings to result in higher tech salaries? Uh, if so, would, would um, hiring or developing a junior at a lower salary be more beneficial than hiring a senior to remain sustainable? I think, Tony, can you say that one more time? I didn't, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Um, do you expect the widening, um, the widening gap with CS grads and tech openings to result in higher tech salaries? You're cutting out, Tony. Can you hear me? It's in the questions okay. if you can't. Okay. I... <laughs> Let's go to the next one and come back to that one. Okay. Um, the next one is, are VCs targeting a date to tell their portfolios to unfreeze hiring? Yeah, that's a good question. We haven't spoken much about the VCs, uh, though, uh, though. Though they're certainly a massive influencer of uh, the the state of uh, market and, and and activity that exists right now. But based on our understanding and, and from our point of view, uh, what, what, um, the venture community uh, has strongly encouraged uh, companies to uh, to uh, bunker down and hold on uh, any unnecessary expenditures, um, really period, uh, and without a clear line of sight uh, to when to unhold. Um, it's unclear completely uh, where that view came from and to what degree that view is based on you know, good present day advice or, 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 or protection uh, from what may be uh, what, what, what may be projected uh, down the road is, is just difficult to tell, but that is what the, what the pervasive view is from the VC community. My expectation, um, based on how, uh, how, um, how much they've asked their companies to bunker down, I expect an equally quick uh, uh, opening, reopening up uh, and, a, and a speed to reopening up. Uh, so I'm a little more of a V-shaped recovery uh, kind of person, um, but we will see what the, what the future holds to date. I'm not hearing consensus from the venture community around uh, when uh, companies should open back up. Uh, what we are seeing is a little, it, we're, we're seeing one-off breaking from, from the herd, uh, so to say, meaning you know, of, of, of the total startup ecosystem that's been told to hold, uh, we're seeing uh, one-off 
one-offs uh, break from that uh, and, and, and seizing some opportunity that, that, that we mentioned here uh, based on their own view uh, that maybe you know, differentiated from what the venture community is promoting. Yeah, if I could just uh, jump on and, and add to that, Boris, uh, totally, totally agree with the general view there. Um, I have heard of instances where, where, where for companies that are, that are actually um, better positioned during this crisis to, to grow, um, for example, like let's say you're an um, a e-commerce online, online pharmacy, for example. So your business has actually improved in the past month. Um, you know, in, in those cases, uh, VCs are recommending to those to those companies to maybe uh, strategically invest more um, in, in customer acquisition so that they can um, steal a little bit of, of market share here um, um, during during a time when when few other companies are are spending a lot on marketing and um, customer acquisition costs overall have have come down significantly on on the channels like Facebook and and Google. Thanks, Sam. Tony, I see that question in there now, so I could uh, I could answer that. And the question is, do you expect the widening gap with CS grads and tech openings to result in higher tech salaries? Um, uh, answer that is not not in the short term, uh, but in the in the, in the long term. Uh, once we do get back to uh, a market that uh, reflects that widened uh, widened gap, then then absolutely, I see tech salaries uh, continuing to go up in the short term. I expect them to I expect them to soften. Thank you. Um, what are some of the key initiatives or projects for um, a, talent, a talent acquisition team to focus on during this um, hiring downturn? Yeah, good question. I, I, think, I think we covered some of that in, uh, in the earlier uh, webinar, but you know, certainly market mapping uh, the, the uh, a target community uh, could be a great uh, activity. Um, engaging with, with talent uh, in order to develop relationships uh, be on the radar of that talent when you are ready to hire. And I've seen companies even be as aggressive as uh, moving candidates all the way through the process up to a commitment of offer uh, with, a, with, a, uh, with, a, um, with a, a commitment to extend a formal offer uh, at, a future, at a future date. Um, and I've seen, I've seen nice reception this on both the company and uh, candidate side uh, for an engagement like that. And then the third one is uh, programs. Uh, so you run a talent acquisition or there's probably no shortage of, uh, you know, initiatives or items on your back burner uh, that, you know, tough time getting to when things are busy. And so now's a great time to take on some, some project work, clean up your talent brand, clean up your uh, careers website, uh, clean up your you know, interviewing toolkit uh, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Um, how are people changing up their messaging um, or interviewing processes to adapt to the large uh, top of, top talented candidates coming to the market? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, big, a big um, distinguisher that I'm seeing right now, and uh, if you are a company that, that's, that's, that's hiring aggressively right now, I encourage you uh, to take a position of uh, a high degree of empathy uh, for the talent that's, that's available in the very unique circumstances that that talent might find themselves in. I think it's easy for a company uh, and hopefully there aren't many that are doing this to take a position of, oh, I have the job. Uh, there's so many of you out there uh, and I'm going uh, uh, um, to create some form of a, of a you know, not, not optimal you know, experience uh, for, you to, for you to engage in. But um, you know, realizing that each of these individuals uh, are going through you know, some version of, of challenge and uh, offering value uh, in the form of getting to know them as a person, uh, offering value to their job search. Um, uh, uh, interests and, um, and, 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 and experiences, uh, while of course, you know, continuing to take advantage as it relates to your own hiring, uh, uh interests and, 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 and initiative. So that, that's one trend that I'm seeing a considerable amount more of It's just the, the community, uh, rallying to offer job seeker support in whatever way uh, they're able to, whether it's connecting them new opportunities or helping with resume review or just, you know, guiding them and, and, and uh, offering some bit of, you know, value along their, their respective journey. So including that in, in, in messaging, uh, in tone, in experience, uh, I think will go a long, a long, long way. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Um, 
I know we we talked about this briefly in the slides um, before, but what does this downturn look like from an analytic standpoint compared to um, economic downturns in the past? And what does the recovery timeline look like? Good question. And I'm certainly no economist. Sam, do you want to maybe take a shot at that one? From what you're uh, sure, yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm not I'm not an economist, uh, but we'll, we'll take a crack. So yeah, as, as we showed in the slides, like, uh, you know, this, this crisis, this economic downturn, um, the magnitude and the speed with, with, with which it has happened is incredible. You know, 22 million unemployment claims in just over a month, uh, you know, nearly three times as many as, as the Great Recession, which happened over a much longer stretch of time. So, um, you know, I'd like to think that an, um, an equally fast recovery will, would happen. Um, but because of the fact that um, the the underlying problem is a is a health crisis, which we haven't yet been able to solve, um, it's really difficult to predict um, when when a full reco full recovery would would happen. Um, I, I've read that I've read a lot of analysts saying like, oh, okay, well we're looking at sort of middle of 2021 or or Q3 2021 for a full return to no normalcy um, because that's when we expect a, a vaccine to be developed. Um, but it, it's really hard to say. I, I think it depends on a lot of factors. Uh, if, if we do return to, to kind of working in the next couple months here, um, that could be good in the short term. Um, but uh, if, if the health problem isn't solved and another outbreak occurs, then we could be back to square one. So um, there, there's a lot of sort of Count, uh, balancing factors there. Boris, any, do you have any uh, additional thoughts to that? No, no, I think that, that's, that's, that sounds about right. I think um, we have one final question. Where do you see the recruiting industry going in the next 24 to 36 months? Um, what service offerings will clients find most attractive? That's a good question. Um, I think um, at least the way that the way that we're looking at it, and uh, I can't can't speak for the entirety of the recruiting industry. The way that we're looking at it is from a very uh, value first approach. Um, there are certainly going to be companies that are hiring. There are certainly going to be you know people that are that are looking for new opportunities. And you know as the market changes, as the world changes, so does the the value that each part of the world uh, respectively you know align with. Um, and so from a from a from a company perspective. Um, you know, it's all, it, it was historically hard to keep up with changing headcount. I can't even begin to imagine uh, what a head of talent is dealing with right now, given the frequency, like the daily frequency of change right now, the daily frequency of change combined with what it, you know, the, the standard interview uh, uh, or hiring uh, cycles, which we saw in this, in this, um, in this webinar shorten. Um, and so, you know, uh, helping companies figure out how to, uh, higher, given the perpetual change of state of world, is one that I imagine companies are going to continue to be to be challenged with. Um, I see resiliency and some form of of, of sustainability um, important to be kind of found into that uh, respective experience. How that's going to happen, you know, the the, the future un will un will unfold itself, and I expect a lot of you know great creativity from from the community to kind of show itself that. On the candidate front, uh, a lot of again equal resiliency is being you know built into uh, candidates. You know, a, 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 you know perception of employment, ability to navigate uh, this you know uh, uh, um, you know instability uh, that respectively exists. And so, thinking about you know their respective career arc, uh, how to create value for current employers, how to create value uh, given what may be you know uh, uh, employment change, uh, how to navigate. Uh, you know, job markets, um, you know, while certainly, you know, challenging and complex in today's market, I see uh, building incredible, you know, skills and value uh, that'll, 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 um, that'll, uh, uh, you know, kind of emerge into uh, uh, what, whatever, whatever the kind of new normal ends up looking like uh, as, you know, this, this thing, uh, as this thing unfolds. Um, I will say that just from a, from a, from a banking company perspective, we, we, we do consider ourselves right on the front lines. We're paying a lot of attention uh, to what's happening. Uh, both on the internal recruiting, on the external recruiting, on the on the candidate uh, and 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 hiring leader uh, engagement front, and we're you know, flex is one of our values. We're staying just incredibly flexible and open uh, to whatever that world shows itself to to be, and then you know position ourselves 
uh, uh, to be able to you know drive as much of that value as possible. So you know more 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 on all of that as uh, as as you know in, in future webinars, uh, future blog posts, future content that we that we that we push out. Um, and I guess on that, since that was the last question, we'll use that as an opportunity. Just thank everybody uh, for for being with us uh, today. Uh, thank you, Sam, for for taking the time to uh, just draft uh, and and uh, um, you know, compile these insights share with us and then we'll again share out this recording we'll share the full insights report uh, for your review and then uh, we'll see everybody at the next the next webinar thank you all so so much we also have one last poll um, if, if anyone that's still around can give us your feedback on this webinar we'd appreciate it Thanks, Sarah.